Hello, hello. My microphone wasn't working, but now it's working. Welcome. Unscheduled Shadow Slave. Yes. <laughs> Unscheduled work schedule today as well. So, I have some time. So I thought, let's do it. <laughs> Since I have time, we will read. I don't even remember when I streamed last time. It was last week, right? Yes, Tuesday last week. <laughs> But now I'm here. Maybe I have some time tomorrow as well. We will see. Because as I said before, I am doing a lot of things right now. But it is temporary. For some time. I don't know. But I'll update in the Discord. Join the Discord. <laughs> anyway. Reading. <gasps> Yay! Reading. What the fuck happened last time? Quick recap. Don't remember where we started, but I do remember where we ended. And since it's on screen as well, I really do remember where we ended. That we... Um, well, Sunny went to the other tower. The tower in the sky. Uh, the sky above instead of the sky below. 
and um, inside there is a second nightmare. So... Now, <laughs> it's a question about should he challenge the nightmare or jump down and survive the crushing? We don't know which one he will pick. I will assume that he will pick the nightmare, but I don't know. I hope he will, because <laughs> this nightmare was very... Uh, interesting since it's hidden in the tower and everything um, and apparently this is a nightmare that Mordred had been looking for and found but can't do it himself because he is in another state or if he is also the one that's like um, shamed up looking at him creepily he's like yes yes sonny go <laughs> that's what I remember and that's when we're where are we gonna start off so I will just do it let's go <clears throat> oh hello welcome perfect timing Chapter 460, Fight or Flight Sunny remained in the Hall of Shames for a while, looking at the seed of Nightmare and the shimmering darkness that suffused it. Wow, thank you for the sub. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Not even a message. Maybe it will come up soon. Or not. Sick. Then he walked outside. Full of thought, Sunny passed between the jaws of the dead dragon and slowly headed toward the lake. There he sat on the stone bench and stared at the water with a dark expression on his face. The wind lightly caressed his face and his pale skin, soothing the few remaining burns that he had received in the sky below. Saint stood silently by his side her graceful onyx figure reflecting in the clear waters of the lake. A heavy sigh escaped from his lips. There we go. My Twitch app is like dying. I got an ad anyway. LMAO. Didn't even say Lamau. Cringe. <laughs> nice. Good Twitch app. Maybe update Twitch app. I saw there was an update. Might help. LMAO. <laughs> Welcome anywhere. Hey, hey. Oh. <clears throat> Yawn and fees and blue. Okay. I am almost home. More than a month ago, he had ventured on an expedition to explore the shipwreck island and search for clues about the whereabouts of the treasure left behind by mysterious Noctis. He had only planned to be gone for a week. He had found the treasure, but also fought and defeated two devils, one fallen and one ascended, receiving two powerful memories in the process. After that, he gazed at the tapestry of fate through the eyes of a divine mask and plunged into an endless abyss. I guess I didn't have to actually do the... <laughs> He's telling what we read last time, which is very good. <laughs> In the last couple of times. He spent several weeks plummeting through a sea of nothingness, only to be met by an ocean of flames in its depths. On the other side of the fire was a black tower built by an ancient demon, and in it was a severed hand of a deity, consumed by a terrible rot. There, Sunny swallowed a phalanx bone of Weaver, and received the second part of their lineage. After that, he used divine flames to open a portal between the dark void and the sunlit heavens, and found the seven chains that a god had once used to bind Desire, the Daemon of Hope. And somewhere along the way, 
he met a lost soul who called himself Mordred, the Prince of Nothing, a disembodied voice that came out of nowhere and helped him along the way. Now, Sonny just had to do one last thing, either plunge into a deadly nightmare or off the edge of the Ivory Island, to be met with the obliterating fury of the crushing. With a heavy sigh, he turned around and stared at the white bones of the great beast that had wrapped its mighty body around the base of Hope's beautiful tower once, thousands of years ago, before succumbing to death. Let's get this show on the road, I guess. <gasps> Which one will lead you? Sometime later, Sunny was leaning on the wall of the ivory tower. He was in a tight spot between the tail of the dead dragon and the white surface of the great pagoda with Saint standing near him, her weapons dismissed. With a crooked smile, Sunny wrapped the two shadows around his body and circulated shadow essence through the coils of the soul serpent, preparing for what was about to come. Then he looked at the taciturn stone demon and raised his eyebrows. What are you waiting for? Push! Saint gave him an indifferent look, then took a step forward, placed her hand on the surface of the massive bone in front of her, and pushed with all her demonic strength. Her feet sunk into the soil by a few centimeters, but the ancient bone did not move. Until Sunny joined his shadow, that was. Pressing his shoulder against the adamantine white surface, he poured shadow essence into his muscles and pushed too. Although it felt as though the strain was going to kill him, the bone finally gave. One of the massive vertebrae comprising, comprising the dead dragon's tail rolled over, separating from the rest. Come on, keep at it! Of course, Sonny was not going to challenge the second nightmare alone. Okay. <laughs> what was he, crazy? Yes! Well, maybe he was a little. <laughs> but being suicidal was not a part of his very mild, borderline, charming craziness. Okay, fine, I guess. Just gonna quickly... Yep, I knew it. I had fucked up the stream on YouTube again. <laughs> oh, how can I do it twice in a row? That it wasn't live on YouTube. Stupid me. I'm so sorry for anyone who wanted to watch it live on YouTube for the first. Sorry for people that will come in later. Shit. Yep, now I got an email like you're sending live. Thank you. <laughs> Shit, okay. Instead, he was going to throw a piece of the dead dragon's tail off the edge of the ivory island and ride it all the way down to the ground, hoping that it would survive the onslaught of the crushing. If a dragon couldn't, then what could? Put your back into it! Saint didn't really need his encouragement, or advice, so Sonny was mostly shouting for his own benefit, since producing loud noises seemed to help him cope with the strain of trying to push the ancient bone for some reason. Luckily, now that it had been dislodged, the process became easier. Together, they slowly moved the massive vertebra... Verte vertebrae? No, no? The past the gazebo containing the inactive portal, then past the grove of ancient trees, and finally to the very edge of the island. There, Sunny stopped for a moment and tried to catch his breath. Then, he cautiously looked down. That was a mistake. If before the colorful mosaic of the flying islands far below was simply a breathtaking sight, now that he had to actually jump down, it made Sunny dizzy and frightened out of his wits. Um, <laughs> but it was too late to change his mind, wasn't it? Gritting his teeth, Sunny tried not to think about the inconceivable height and climbed inside the bird raw, which, of course, was hollow at the center. There was just enough space there to fit his body, and that was the reason why he had chosen this particular one in the first place. He lingered for a long time, trying to gather his courage. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe I should just enter the seed. What's the big deal anyway? It's, it's just a second nightmare. But no, there was no way back. He simply had to do it. Inhaling deeply, Sonny held his breath for a moment and then screamed in a small voice, Saint, push it over! <laughs> That's screaming in a small voice. 
outside the massive vertebra, the taciturn demon stared at the surface of the ancient bone for a moment, and then gave it a devastating kick. As the tailbone of the dragon plunged off the edge of the ivory island, giving Sunny a serious rattle, he yelped, dismissed Saint, and dissolved into the shadow that dwelt in the hollow space inside the vertebra. Of course, he wasn't going to try and survive the crushing in his physical form. He just needed a large enough shadow to hide in. As long as the dragon bone endured, the shadow would too, and he would be safe. If it endured... For a couple of seconds, everything seemed fine, but then the vertebra left the bubble of safety surrounding the heavenly island, and suddenly, an inconceivable pressure struck it from all sides like a hammer of a wrathful god, making the porcelain bone produce terrifying cracking noises. Once again, Sunny was plummeting with terrible speed through the sky. Only this time, the vehicle he had chosen to transport him was even stranger, as well as spinning like crazy with the wind roaring deafeningly all around. Luckily, he couldn't get sick as a shadow. Otherwise, his already empty stomach would have become emptier. Curses! Don't break, you damn bone! The vertebra of the dead dragon was cracking and slowly breaking apart, but miraculously still holding together. No! Oh, enough look wipe. Ugh. Rip. I'm sad to hear. I'm sad. Oh. Luckily, my Pokemon are like level 100. <laughs> ah! <Dark>. Hello. <laughs> oh. Still holding together. At this height, the crushing was deadly enough to pulverize the flesh of a saint, a bona fide, a bona fide demigod, into a bloody paste, maybe even a big red cloud. But the adamantine dragon bone was only now beginning to slowly crumble apart. Once the process started, though, it became unstoppable. Sunny panicked as he watched white cracks appear on the white surface all around him. Then a piece of the bone flew away, letting in a chaotic flood of light. Cursing, uh, cursing, he shifted away from the breach, but seconds later another appeared, and then another. The size of the shadow he could hide in was growing smaller and smaller. Crap. Soon, there were more holes and cracks in the bone than he could count. And then it crumbled completely. <gasps> oh my god. I just sat down with breakfast. Enjoy breakfast! Hello, Dark. Hello. I'm finally streaming YouTube again. I, uh, I haven't been streaming since Tuesday last week. I'm doing things. I don't have time. But yes, uh, I failed YouTube streaming sometimes because <laughs> I did a private stream, apparently. But uh, now I put it out, so it's public. So, um, sorry. <laughs> But welcome. At the last second, Sunny slid into the big into onto the biggest remaining slab of the ancient vertebra, and then went in, went into a crazy dance, shifting from one side of it to another as the fragment spun and exposed different parts of it to the sunlight. Small pieces broke off from it, and then the fragment itself cracked too. Ugh. <laughs> Finally, the piece of the adamantine vertebra, vertebrae, disinte now it's a vertebrae, okay, disintegrated into a rain of splinters that were too small to fit Sunny into their shadows. With nowhere else to hide, he was thrown out into the physical world, his body instantly becoming the victim of the bone-breaking force of the crushing. Luckily, his bones were now much more robust than before, and the crushing was already not as irrevocably obliterating as it had been higher up. As a loud scream escaped from Sunny's mouth, he continued to fall, feeling his body go through a cruel meat grinder. But with the help of two shadows and a generous outpour of shadow essence, it wasn't enough to kill him, or even seriously wound him. It was simply painful, damaging, and unpleasant. 
The tailbone of the dead dragon had carried him down for long enough to go through the worst layers of the crushing. Now all he had to do was stick the landing. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, what's the plan there? What's the landing plan? With a suppressed groan, Sunny struggled to control his fall and finally managed to stabilize his body, preventing it from spinning madly. The Shamed Isles were now much, much closer than they had been before. In fact, he could even recognize a few nearest ones. Don't you dare miss, you pale bastard! He really, really didn't want to repeat the whole damn process again. Summoning the Darkwing, Sunny waited for a second for the Dragonfly Cloak to activate its enchantment, and then slowly started to turn his fall into a glide. A single thought rang in his mind. I made it. I actually made it. Crap. I really did. I didn't even think about that one. That's it's like, what if he missed an island? Like, <laughs> then he's down in the sky below again. <laughs> Repeatedly, up, down, up, down. <laughs> But, like, he has to go up to the second nightmare, right? Like, that's the second nightmare. What? At some point, he has to. No way. Sometime later, a figure of a young man fell from the skies and nimbly landed on the index finger of the giant iron hand that lay in the center of a peaceful, quiet island. The young man looked a bit strange. He was naked above the waist, with several ha half-healed burns covering his pale skin and a menacing, intricate tattoo of a coiling black serpent covering his arms, as well as a large part of his torso. What? Is it that big? I thought it was just one arm, like one sleeve. Not the whole, both arms and like his whole upper body. <laughs> like, neck down to his waist. What? He would fall like in Portal. Yeah, exactly! <laughs> Um, but his black hair was wild and disheveled, and his dark eyes seemed a little crazy. Sunny swayed a little, caught his balance, and turned to a group of awakened who were sitting around a dancing campfire, staring at him with their mouths wide open. A bright smile appeared on his face. Is he gonna fucking puke on them? Ah, good day to you, fellow humans. Say... As mad intensity appeared in his eyes, Sunny licked his lips and asked hoarsely, Is that food I see roasting over your fire? <laughs> Yuck is so sunny, right? Yes. <laughs> what a large tattoo you have. <laughs> fellow humans, right? Exactly. <laughs> in quotation, fellow humans. <laughs> Guilty 3! End of part 1. <gasps> Hall of Shanes. Ah! On to part 2 then. Oh my god. <clears throat> good part, good part. Enjoyed. <gasps> Definitely not an nightmare creature. Just imagining being these people like, what the fuck, Juno? <laughs> I wonder if they gave him some food. I wonder if we will find out if they gave him some food even. Probably not, right? He probably took it. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> like an animal. Okay. He made it crazy. They were the food, yes. Chapter 461. Welcome home. The heavy lid of the metal sarcophagus opened, letting out the bluish light and wisps of cold mist. Soon, a pale hand emerged from inside. Jumping out of the sleeping pod. Way we're back in the fucking real world! <clears throat> Sunny landed on the floor, felt the ceramic texture of the armored plates beneath his bare feet, and let out a low, satisfied sigh. I'm back. Finally. Ready to stalk my sister again. <laughs> It was so nice to return to the real world. After meeting the cohorts of the Sanctuary Awakened on the Iron Hand Island, he traveled back to the Citadel with them. Some were curious about where he had been for more than a month, but most weren't even aware that Sunny had gone missing. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He used the full scope of his formidable ability to bend the truth every which way, and left them with the impression that his recent expedition had been long, but not very exciting. They did continue to give him strange looks the whole way back, though. For some reason. <laughs> I wonder why. But Sonny wasn't too bothered by that. After entering the sanctuary, he went straight for the altar. Since it was the middle of the day and the moon was hidden behind the horizon, he couldn't use the coins immediately. So instead, he simply touched the altar and left the dream realm. Let's see how the mongrel stuff has evolved. Right! Completely forgot about that. Holy... Okay, that's interesting as well. Yeah. Home. I'm finally home. Even though Sunny had not spent a lot of time in his new house, the feeling of safety, both its walls and the real world, gave him... Huh? The feeling of safety, both its walls and the real world, gave him was extremely comforting. Miraculously, even though he had been gone for many weeks, his body felt completely fine. It was as though he had only slept for a night. That's the magic of technology! Glancing at the extravagantly expensive sleeping pod, Sonny decided that he had spent his money well and headed for the exit out of the basement while whistling a cheerful tune. Then, however, he froze. What the hell? Something was not right. First of all, he had never used the lightning, the lighting in the underground dojo, but now it was turned on, drowning everything with bright light. Secondly, the armored doors of the lift of the lift leading up were violently torn open. It was as though a massive nightmare creature had broken through the defense system of the house and ripped them apart, bending the adamantine alloy like it was wax. Crap. Sunny jumped back and summoned the cruel sight. What could have what could have come here? Did a gate open nearby? Full of tension and grim determination, he used the stairwell to climb to the ground floor and cautiously entered his living room. The first thing he saw there was dirty dishes? Lots of dirty dishes. The second thing he saw were two hazel eyes staring at him with scathing accusation. Have I gone really, really crazy? Somehow Effie was in his living room, sitting in her wheelchair with a bowl of steaming cup noodles in one hand and chopsticks in the other. There was a very disgruntled expression on her face. What the hell is she doing here? What's going on? Staring at Sunny, Effie swallowed a mouthful of noodles and then said in a dark tone, You're back. Wait to make your friends worry, asshole. <laughs> Effie the home invader. <laughs> Why are they worrying? Like, he did never said, I, well... Maybe that's why he never said that he was going in, but it's like, he didn't the first time either. Maybe then he wasn't gone for weeks, though. So, she ate all his food. Totally. <laughs> As it turned out, back when Sunny had been falling into the sky below and thinking about how no one would miss him, he was very, very wrong. In fact, the opposite had happened. About two weeks after he stopped answering their messages, both Effie and Kai got worried. No, oh. Effie went to the academy to check on him, and that was when they learned that Sunny moved out of the dormitory. Bastard, you could have told us that you bought yourself a house, you know? You owe me a housewarming party. Sunny blinked. A what party? Is there really such a thing, or is she pulling my leg? <laughs> Not knowing where to find him, Kai used his connections to learn Sunny's new address. Since he was limited in where he could go without drawing the attention of the press, Effie went instead. And when she found the basement locked, well, my, my armored doors, it was you, you broke them, she sneered. What are you crying about? Those armored doors of yours were pathetically easy to break anyway. Buy yourself better ones. Anyway, I thought that I was going to find your corpse in the sleeping pod. Do you even know how that made me feel? A heavy expression appeared in her face. That would have been a... A real tragedy, Sunny sighed. Well, at least she cares. <laughs> I mean, just think about it. All those amazing memories you hoard, gone just like that. <laughs> if you're going to die, at least give them to me before you do. Spoke too soon. <laughs> My god. After making sure that his life signs were stable inside the sleeping pod, 
Effie stayed to keep a watch on him, while both she and Kai tried to find out where Sunny was. Apparently, they went as far as contracting the, the representatives of the White Feather Clan. You didn't! Sunny grabbed his head, realizing that he had a lot of explanation explaining to do once he was back in the sanctuary. A cohort of random awakened was one thing, but if Saint Tyrus herself was aware of his disappearance, things were going to get much harder for him. Effie snorted. Of course we did! We also contacted Cassie and her firekeepers, since they have a cohort in the remote hellhole you are anchored at. But even she didn't know where the hell you have disappeared to. Curses! They even brought Cassie into it. Sunny gro groaned. But why? Why would you do all this? Effie gave him a long look, then shook her head dejectedly. Dofus, can you stop being such a Dofus? <laughs> he stared at her in bewilderment. What is that supposed to mean? She shook her head again and activated her communicator. Ponder on it. And while you're at it, be quiet for a few minutes. I need to call Kai and tell him that you have turned up. Poor guy must have flown halfway to the Shane Isles by now. Su Sunny eyes. Sunny's eyes grew wide. F flown? What? Effie gave him a pit of pit of pitying look. Then she said, What part of be quiet did you not understand? Anyone but Cassie. <laughs> they missed him. They were worried. They care. That's cute. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> Not that I didn't think that they did, but still. Nice. Chapter 462. An epic quest. Ooh. After Effie gave a <laughs> After Effie gave Kai a call and let him know that Sunny was alive and back in the real world, they spent a minute in awkward silence. Sunny looked around, taking in the sight of his once pristine and orderly living room. Living room. Now there were dirty dishes everywhere, as well as empty packets of takeout food. At least he thought that that was what they were since he had never actually bought one before. Effie was such a slob. There were even several pieces of clothing thrown into a corner. Speaking of clothing... Crap! By the way, Sunny, when did you get this badass tattoo? A big, long snake, no less! Ming's a girl wonder. What? <laughs> wonder what? He sighed heavily, cursing the fact that he had not adjusted the puppeteer shroud after summoning it back in the basement. There were no burns on his skin now, after all. Oh my god. <laughs> It's not really a tattoo. It's a magical serpent that helps me control and regenerate the essence faster. Don't ask why it manifests as a tattoo, because you have no idea, really. He hesitated for a bit and asked, So you've been just living here for these past few weeks? Evie shrugged. Sure. Someone had to monitor your vital signs. Plus, my family... Well, they deserved a break after taking care of my comatose body for four years and everything before that. So I bought a very nice place for us and then sort of moved out. Then an animated expression appeared in her face. Don't worry though, the stuff you keep in your bedroom remain a secret. I can't even go up the stairs, remember? <laughs> Sunny stared at her in outrage. What stuff? There's no stuff. I don't even use the bedroom. I can't really sleep, can I? Effie laughed. Right. Makes sense. That you're not doing it on the bed kind of guy. What? <laughs> oh yeah, what happened to your fridge? <laughs> wow, now you fucking save. <laughs> God. Effie. <laughs> he glared and looked away in embarrassment. Emba why? Why? <laughs> ah, that. I sort of broke it by accident. What? He's embarrassed about the fridge, but not the, <laughs> not the other thing she said? Okay, cool. 
Then a sudden smile appeared in his face. Want to go buy a new one? Is that an invite? I'm scared. I don't know what the fuck. This conversation is so fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, that's what she meant. Oh, kitchen, I see. <laughs> Don't punish the fridge. <sighs> oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he knows her for almost a year at this point. The fuck do you mean with that shit? What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> And <laughs> no. Since Kai wanted to meet, Sonia and Effie decided to visit an elite shopping center in the center of the city, and then wait for him in a posh restaurant nearby. The former huntress also told Sonia that she would hold off on asking questions about his unexpected adventure until all three of them were together, so that he didn't have to repeat everything twice. Nice, good author. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. And that he is not surprised that she is this harsh. <laughs> Nothing sus. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> if you say so. Which suited him fine, since he needed time to decide what he wanted to tell his friends, and what would be better kept to himself. There was so much he needed to think about, and do. The journey into the sky below had not only disrupted his plans in the real world, but also added new things to his agenda. From training to wield a spear better to, to setting up a shop to sell the soul shards he had brought back with the help of the covetous coffer, there were just too many opportunities in front of him. He also had to decide what to do about the rain, and continue practicing shadow dance in the dreamscape. Everyone had forgotten about Mongrel by now, surely. No doubt about it. What the f- no. No, they haven't. Adult life is hard. <laughs> Word. <laughs> they reached the shopping center with the help of a passenger, of a passenger, P two E, which seemed a bit too luxurious to Sunny, but was a necessity considering that it would have been hard for Effie to move around in public transport. Not only because of her disability, but also because she was somewhat of a celebrity. He had not he had noticed at least three propaganda posters depicting her, the way she looked in the dream realm, to be exact, on buildings as the PTV drove toward the heart of the city. Even he had to agree that Effie looked impressive, like a beautiful goddess of war that knew no fear or would never surrender to anything, not even the hopeless darkness of the forgotten shore. Triumph and perseverance. That was what people needed to see. Considering how hard and dire life in the real world could seem sometimes, even if it was just a sweet, benevolent lie, it gave them hope at least. A, ho a hope gave them strength. Noticing his gaze, Effie grinned. Looking good, am I? <laughs> <laughs> he had no choice but to tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Levy. Streaming on Monday? Yes, streaming today. She giggled. Do you remember how Scar and Park came up with the story to make me seem like some kind of a folk hero in the outer settlement? Back when Gunlog's people were searching for me? <laughs> Scar and Park? Did we say these names before? Maybe we did, I'm sorry. but <laughs> Scar and Park. Well, the government ran wild with it, as you can see. Plus the fact that I was in charge of the first line during the siege. They made me into a poster girl for the young generation of the Awakened. Right after Nephis, of course. Her face suddenly grew dark and solemn. After a long pause, Effie added. It's a shame that neither of them lived long enough to see their stupid story become a worldwide hit. Park would have been so full of himself now, if he did. I can just about hear him boast. I feel like I've seen Scar and Park, like the names before. I think we, Sunny had some type of interaction with them. Like once. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that was the bitter truth that people didn't get to see. 
The terrible price of the triumph they celebrated was known only to those who had gone through it, and somehow emerged alive on the other side. Old Epic Awards. Ah, okay. But then maybe she said their names or some shit. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm just... Anyway, the two of them spent some relax relaxing time in the shopping center. Effie resting in her wheelchair, Sunny pushing it from behind. From time to time, someone recognized her as the famous raised by wolves and politely expressed their respect and admiration. He, on the other hand, seemed almost invisible. <laughs> Sunny didn't mind. It was better that way, really. Being invisible suited a shadow very well. More importantly, the act of buying a stupid refrigerator filled him with pure delight. Then why is he calling it stupid? He had been fant fantasizing about it for so long in the sky below, after all. In a sense, this whole thing had just been a giant obstacle on its epic quest to buy a fridge. <laughs> oh, and now, after overcoming countless dangers and hardships, that deadly quest was over. Sunny worked out the details about the delivery, and soon it was time to meet up with Kai. <laughs> Imagine that whole part was just like, quest for a fridge. <laughs> Sunny's epic quest to buy a fridge. <laughs> he had never been <clears throat> he had never been to a posh restaurant before, but it seemed as though his outer appearance was decent enough to not look out of place. The mundane clothes he wore had been chosen with the help of the charming fashion icon himself, after all. Or maybe it was Effie's presence that made everyone there extra polite and a little bit reverent. Probably. They entered a tastefully decorated space and saw a tall individual in a black cap and an ordinary face mask standing nearby. The weirdo was wearing sunglasses inside. Before Sonny could understand what was happening, the masked individual quickly approached and gave him a big hug. Kai. Uh, does he really think that his disguise is fooling anyone? And why is he always trying to hug me? Trying, he's succeeding. Of course, it was Kai. No amount of masks and sunglasses could hide the glamorous aura of the enchanting nightingale. It only made him stand out even more. Sunny sighed. That dashing bastard. <laughs> Kai! <laughs> Out. What is this? <clears throat> Friendship arc. Very sweet. What the? <gasps> oh my god, one more of these. What the fuck? It's a br What is going on? Romance tag was for Kai this whole time. 100%. What the fuck is this? The last thing I remember was Seed of the Night. Where is how much did I miss? Well, we just came back to the real world. world. Okay, but I am. I don't care about that. Right now, here we are. Okay, chapter four hundred sixty-three: the incredible adventures and astonishing deeds of heroic dreamer Sunless and his stoic stone companions, Talking Rock and Silent Saint. Abridged, volume two. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Let's go. The three of them sat down and were presented with old-fashioned paper menus to make their choice from. Sonny stared at the word steak for a bit, then shuddered and shifted his gaze to the salad section. Oh my god, yeah. A few minutes later, a waiter approached to take their order. Effie spoke. I guess three portions of... What the fuck? <laughs> How am I supposed to say this? <laughs> Bimbap? <laughs> Are these real things? <laughs> Three portions of Sam Sam Gyopsol? <laughs> Three bowls of Gyangmyeon? And three portions of Telkboki. <laughs> I have to Google bibimbap. <laughs> it is real. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this sound Korean as fuck. And they are. Holy shit. Okay, well. <laughs> um. Anyway. 
Congratulations. Congratulations, Tag being first. Yay. <laughs> Fucking. Why did it say <laughs> Korean? It is Korean. But I can fucking speak Korean. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Then she turned to them, smiled innocently, and asked, Oh, and what about you guys? What are you going to order? You <laughs> just realized she did three of <laughs> fucking so much. It's crazy. The waiter, though, somehow managed to keep a straight up going. Said he almost choked in the water he was drinking from a beautiful crystal glass. The waiter, though, somehow managed to keep a straight face. What a professional. Since they were seated in a private booth, Kai finally took off his cap and sunglasses, then smiled brilliantly. His voice sounded so sincere that it irked Sunny. A little. It's so nice to see you, Sunny. Effie and I are really... Effie and I were really worried. Sunny cleared his throat. That's a thanks, I guess. I sort of assumed that you wouldn't notice that I was gone. Effie sighed. I'm starting to wish that I didn't, you idiot. Anyway, what the hell happened? Why were you gone for an entire month? Are they not gonna order? <laughs> I'm saying, is the waiter just like, okay, guys, can we please? <laughs> like, <laughs> now I am. Now I imagine the waiters there the whole time. <laughs> My God, because it did say that he left, right? Yeah, right, the waiter kept a straight face. Huh? They didn't say that he left. Yeah, that waiter is listening. Hello and holy night! Yes! Feel free to watch it afterwards. Thank you for stopping by though. I'm still on a weird schedule. Discord for updates, if anything. <laughs> okay, so confirmed. Waiter's still there. Waiter listening to lore. <laughs> um. Uh, why were you going on a time route? He hesitated, then said, "Do you want to hear the long version or the short version? Version, long." Kai gave him a curious look. Let's start with the short version, I think. Sunny scratched the back of his head, so he wants both. <laughs> why? All right. Well. In that case, I basically just wanted to find clues about a hidden treasure, but ended up almost being eaten by a treasure chest, falling into a bottomless abyss on top of a devil's corpse, and being burned by divine flames. Luckily, there is this voice I can hear in my head sometimes, and it helped me to... <laughs> and it helped me to only get burned a little. <laughs> what the fuck? Effie tilted her head and gave him a strange look. Kai's smile paled a little. A little. <laughs> oh, wow. Sunny took a sip of water and continued in a carefree tone. Yes, <laughs> as if it's like completely normal. Anyway, deep in the void, I found a black tower. There were some broken dolls and a rotting sever severed arm inside, which I uh, ate, sort of. From the black tower in the abyss, I went to a white tower in the skies and then rode back to the ground on a dragon's tail. That's basically it. Oh, and before all that, I kind of killed myself, I guess. Got a very nice memory out of it, too. <laughs> the two of them stared at him for a few moments, and then sighed almost simultaneously. Kai shook his head. I take it back. Let's hear the long version. <coughs> yes, and Kai can tell he's telling the truth. That's the best thing. <laughs> oh, waiter's still there, by the way. I guess he did make a little pause here, so I guess technically the waiter could have left. But I still want to think that he's still there. <laughs> Sunny explained the sequence of events that led to him being gone for more than a month, keeping a few things to himself, like the true number of the miraculous coins he had collected, everything having to do with Weaver, and the real reason for why he was so desperate to grow stronger as fast as possible. When he was done, Effie giggled. Well, that faded attribute of yours has really been in overdrive lately, hasn't it? A sour expression appeared on Sunny's face. I guess. I had solid I had solid three months of nothing too too bad or too good happening before that though. But that's the thing. 
When it does finally happen, one thing usually leads to another. It's not all terrible though. I had to work really hard to survive, but other than that, this expedition was a windfall for me. Kai took a sip of Kai took a sip of tea and then said thoughtfully, "And what about this voice, Mordred? Do you trust him?" Sunny hesitated and shrugged. After I matured that he's not just a figment of my imagination, I came to believe that Mordred is indeed one of the lost, and most likely an awakened just like we are. Most likely, he can communicate with me over a large distance because of the mirror shard I picked up after putting down the strange artifact echo of his. Other than that, though, I don't know. He is very mysterious, to say the least. He thought for a bit, and then added. Hello, Lysini. Just started binging these. I'm having a lot of fun with them. <laughs> Thanks for reacting since I'm a chapter 80s. Though I'm caught up with the novel. Ah, oh, what do you think about Neff currently a fave? If Neff is my favorite? I don't know. All of them are amazing. Like, I love almost every character. Like, I like every character. They're just... The characters are very good. <laughs> is she a favorite? I can't pick and choose favorites. I mean, it's like Harper was also a good character. <laughs> it was very funny to me. <laughs> Golden man with morphing armor. Gunlog. Holy shit, yes. Master Jet, also amazing. So yeah, I would say Neff is a favorite then. Because they're all... <laughs> the more I know about a character, the more favorable to me they are. When the waiter goes back into the kitchen, he can tell the craziest story to the cooks ever. <laughs> like, you can't believe <laughs> what these guys told me. Yeah, many of my favorite moments are just characters talking. Dude, that is, like, conversations in this fucking novel is the best thing ever. Seriously, I just want them to talk to each other. I just want character interactions. They are so good. Like this. Like, this is a amazing. <laughs> it's so funny. But yes. And thank you for binging. <laughs> and thank you for enjoying. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sonny and F's relationship is definitely one of the best things in the novel. Yes. 100%. It's extremely interesting. <laughs> Saint is a great conversa conversationalist. Yep. <laughs> Guilty 3 is just an awesome writer. Yes. 100%. Join his Discord. <laughs> Okay, where were we? Mm, do we trust Mordred? He's an awakening just like we are. Most likely he can communicate with me over a large distance because of the mirror shard I picked up after putting down the strange artifact Echo of his. Other than that, though, I don't know. He's very mysterious, at least. Yeah, he thought of it too. All right. No. Oh. More things. <laughs> so he should attempt to fuse Saint to the talking rock. Oh my god, Saint speech. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Behind the layer of progression fantasy is a cast of characters that are slowly becoming more complete and more human. The parallels are so fun. Seriously. Hundred percent agree. I trust Mordred. Don't care if anyone else don't. I really don't. <laughs> okay. Every piece of information he had given me turned out to be true so far. And very helpful. I might have not been alive right now if not for him, so it's hard to say, really. Kai smiled. Well, in that case, he's alright in my book. He's alright so far until he does something shitty. Also, I think you're the only person on Twitch to read this. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully, I would say. Hopefully. <laughs> but it's very nice. I don't know how many people do it on YouTube... I've seen the the AI voices and I was like, eh. 
it's not the same. <laughs> if there is another, eliminate them. <laughs> I mean, but have they been shouted out the Guild of Three's Discord? Mm, don't think so. <laughs> Have I? Mm, yes. <laughs> Am I still amazed? Yes. <laughs> Am I grateful? Amazingly. Will I brag about it? 100%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done with that. Oh, still one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Ever. <laughs> He's a runner in my book. Sunny paused as the waiter. <gasps> the waiter! Sunny paused as the waiter approached. Oh, so he did leave. I bet he 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 left in the, the pause though. So he was there for the first he was there for the short version version. But then when he was like, okay, let's do the long version, then he left and now he's back. <laughs> They're only bad AI voices. Yours is better. Oh my AI voice. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. 100% bragger, 100% brat asshole. Sunny paused as the waiter approached to bring the dirty dishes away and refill their glasses. After they were alone once again, he remained silent for a bit, then turned to Effie. But anyway, I do believe that what he said about the seed is true. I think I can get the obsidian knife, which is supposed to make the nightmare easier. So, I wanted to ask... Effie, I know that you can snap your fingers and have a dozen of the most powerful awakened cohorts in the world accompany you to conquer the second nightmare. But would you consider challenging one with me? <gasps> oh, yes. He expected her to tease him a little before giving an answer, but Effie remained quiet for a bit, an uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically serious expression on her face. After a while, she asked, Challenge a nightmare? Now, barely four months after we had become awakened? Are you crazy, Sonny? He smiled. No, I don't mean now. Both of us need time to grow stronger and prepare, of course. After saying that, Sonny looked away. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm worthless. <laughs> In seven months, after the winter solstice, that's when I plan to return to the ivory tower and go into that seed. Will you come with me? <laughs> Will you enter the scene with me? <laughs> Is this a date? <laughs> Effie looked at him for a long time and smiled too. Sure, why not? I wouldn't have it any other way even. But Sonny, I have one condition. <laughs> Kai is coming with us. <laughs> no. Going on a date to hell. Oh, a little drink. He raised an eyebrow. Really? What is it? Effie glanced at Kai, then said calmly, You need to convince Cassie to join us too. Oh my god, why can't you do it, Effie? Why do Sunny have to do it? Oh. His speech kills her. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened between the two of you, but it doesn't matter. Members of a cohort don't need to be friends. They just need to work well together. And our cohort worked perfectly, back on the Vuganan shore. Castor is dead, and Ephes is gone, but Cassie is still, there, still here, and we both know how invaluable her aspect is. <laughs> still Kai like, hello, can I be mentioned, please? <laughs> what the fuck? Because Castor is dead, and Ephes is gone, there's only Cassie left. Oh, hi Kai. Anyway, Cassie, I want Cassie. <laughs> What the fuck? As Sunny's face darkened, she added. Plus, isn't she anchored at the Night Temple? She can help you get the Ivory Knife, as well. The Princeling said that having both would be much better. A nightmare is a nightmare and will be absolutely deadly, no matter how prepared you are. Letting go of any advantage is stupid. Convince Cassie. A wave of anger and protest rose from the depths of Sunny's heart. Even though we had time to recover from what had happened in the Crimson Spire and understood the reason why Cassie had done what she had, he was still full of resentment. He was still hurt. He was still unwilling to even think about forgiving her. 
all fair. What does she mean? It's like, I don't know what happened between you two. What? She doesn't know? Oh, I am I fucking stupid? Yes, of course she doesn't know. Oh my god. Oh, I envy you though. I caught up with the novel in 24 days myself like a month ago. Now I'm forced to see content, unable to bear the burden of catching up. <laughs> I've already read almost all fanfics. <laughs> there are fanfics! <laughs> <laughs> okay, when we are <laughs> when we are up to date <laughs> You know where we're going <laughs> If we will ever catch up But they're probably not Those fanfics I assume not <laughs> But who knows? No, I want the real deal. I want the guilty three guilty three lore but yeah I, i've been going for some time no <laughs> no pushing it here <laughs> everyone's like yes me too <laughs> chapter releases please to withdraw <laughs> that's why you have me <laughs> I'm doing my best, I swear. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. But Effie was right. No matter how he felt about Cassie, she was a boon for any cohort. Especially now, since she had grown much more confident in her powers after becoming an Awakened. She also had other survivors of the Forgotten Shore following her as they waited for Nephis to return. And the connection to the Clan Valor emissaries in the night temple he didn't have to forgive her to fight side by side with her he just had to trust that she would, won't betray him again which he reluctantly did even though Sonny didn't want to give cassie the benefits of the doubt he knew that she had learned a bitter lesson a heavy sigh escaped from his lips what should i do it was at that moment that kai who had remained silent during their conversation suddenly spoke if you don't mind Count me in two. <laughs> oh my god. So he was like, why don't you care about me? <laughs> I want to challenge the second nightmare with the three of you guys as well. In fact, even if you do mind, I insist. Oh my god, he invited himself. Holy shit, this is so sad. This is so sad. They were like, no. <laughs> Fuck you, guy. Like, he's right there. He didn't even... He didn't even Ask. Oh, take your time reading. Thank you, I will. We are all addicts. Yes, <laughs> so I've understood. <laughs> Guys, I can help, really. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I can shoot my bow. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> it won't even notice that I'm there. <laughs> Please. Oh my god. Here we're chapter one. Okay, 64. Um, quick, 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 little bathroom break, and I'll be right back again. Guess who's back? Back again. As we wait, have you all joined the Discord and followed her Twitter? Stoop. St stoop. <laughs> Stop it. But yes, Discord, please. Poor Kai, seriously. <laughs> A lot of fanfics, two different ones have over 10 chapters <laughs> and are not just one shots. There's even a story with over 100 chapters. What the fuck? It's crazy. 
same i <laughs> i don't use twitter at all that was only an announcement for when i streamed i probably will never use it ever again so don't go there <laughs> okay <clears throat> Let's go. Chapter 464. Passion blossoms hotter in the cold heart of despair. What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Both Sunny and Effie stared at him in surprise. After a while, the former huntress asked, Challenged a nightmare with us? Don't you have a great position in Bastion, safe behind its walls? Has Sunny infected you with his madness? Oh, are they like, uh, you don't need to get stronger, what the fuck? You're, you're set for life. Is that why? Hmm. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> Passion, yes. And hotter? Ooh. Kai frowned, then looked away. After a while, he said, Yes, I do. But do you guys remember Aiko? Yes. She had a gambling den in the Bright Castle. Well, anyway, Aiko has a real talent for managing various things, so the agency hired her as my manager. One evening, we ended up talking about the Dark City. Okay... Wait, by the way, I hope you haven't- but some people are merciless, so have you been spoiled about something, or have you managed to- Bear the darkness and still be completely blind. <laughs> Please don't spoil me. I've had a few, like, small things. I think there's only one thing that's left, and it was like, I don't even understand what the fucking... Yeah, people, listen, <laughs> people have tried. Some have, and some are already answered now, and the things that I've been spoiled on, I don't even understand what that means. So it's not really a spoiler, I guess, or I've just forgotten about it. So <laughs> that's one good thing about memory that <laughs> I forget. Um, but yeah, if someone spoils, then just bye-bye. That's a no. But yeah, so I still... I would say that I still have no fucking clue what's gonna happen. Like... No idea. Death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we call people spoiled stuff bitches. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. I haven't been unlucky myself, so I'm just glad. Oh, yeah. I, I, I will go on for as long as I can to keep unspoiled. I want to keep it that way. But it's good that the majority of people are like, oh my god, don't get spoiled, so... That's good. Because <laughs> it will only ruin everything. So... Yes, all hail my small brain. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> uh, I go. A sad smile appeared in his face. Both of you only lived in the outer settlement, which had its own share of challenges, of course. Much more dire than what we what we who paid tribute faced in the castle. But but life wasn't that bright there either. <laughs> no shit. He remained silent for a bit and continued. Aiko had it way worse than I though. Especially after one of the Pathfinders made a point of making her life a living hell. Andal. Whose head Lady Nephis eventually took off his shoulders. We all knew it, but no one really helped. Ow. A heavy sigh escaped from Kai's lips. Because what could any one of us really do against one of the Pathfinders? But there was a lot of these compromises, compromises of little lies we told ourselves as we closed our eyes to every dark, dirty thing that went on around us. Okay, that implies something. He looked at Effie and said, People were starving in the outer settlement while we had our bellies full? Well, it wasn't our fault, because the castle couldn't feed any everyone. Surely, if there was more food, we would have shared. The guards decided to harass someone? Well, that wasn't our fault either, because Tessai was too powerful and we were too weak to resist him, and so on, endlessly. 
everyone went as far as they needed to keep thinking of themselves as one of the good guys. Kai grew silent, then said quietly, But, you see, it actually was our fault. All of us have committed the same crime. We were all weak. When I spoke to Aiko, I finally realized that in this world, being weak is a sin too. At least for us, the Awaken. So, yes, I want to challenge the second nightmare, despite being safe and sound behind the walls of the Bastion, because I never want to close my eyes to anything ever again. Mm. <laughs> is there a fan fiction about Sunny joining the Good Luck's harem? Should be. Hello! None. Sad. <laughs> he looked at them, then smiled. Seven months? That's more than enough time for me to prepare. Plus, don't you need someone who can fly? Or are you going to simply jump into the weird and under sky again and just hope to miss all those flames? Sunny coughed. Kai had a point. <laughs> now, now Kai is even selling himself in. He's like, you need me, actually. I understand that you don't want me, but you need me. <laughs> like, ugh, just take him. Well, if you put it like that, oh, that's mean. <laughs> that's mean to Kai. Aww. After Kai's unexpected and poignant confession, they spent some time simply relaxing, laughing, enjoying their food, and chatting about this and that. Cute. Kai shared his experience of winning 12 consecutive weeks of the Avatar Sinker and having to lose on purpose in the end, and the furor his face revealed in the subsequent announcement of Night and Gale upcoming comeback album caused in the music industry and among the fans. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He also complained about having to hire a second publicist because of a strange scandal he had gotten somehow involved in on the network, causing Sunny to look away in shame and keep his mouth tightly shut. <laughs> hmm. Effie mostly talked about all the fried chicken wings she had eaten and all the sorts of beer she had drunk, as well as what types of nightmare creatures she had hunted, and fried, and ate. She also joked about all the propaganda events the government wanted her to participate in, and the various ways with which she had managed to dodge most of them. <laughs> what is Sunny gonna say? <laughs> Sunny shared his experience of buying a house and how it made him feel. He almost got sentimental thinking about his beautiful armored doors that Effie had smashed through, and about his new expensive shiny refrigerator. Finally, Kai had to return to his schedule. Before they parted though, he hesitated then took out two colorful pieces of synthetic paper from his pocket with a very embarrassed expression on his face. What the fuck? Without saying anything, he handed the brochures to Sunny and Effie. Oh my god, is it a fucking... Uh, is it a... what is it called? A concert? Sunny took one and stared at it with a confused expression. It appeared to be an invitation of some sort. On it was an image of two people standing back to back with swords in their hands. Both of them extremely beautiful, in a professional kind of way. <laughs> were they standing in a professional kind of way, or were they beautiful in a professional kind of way? <laughs> Movie? No way. The guy was dark-skinned and handsome, with broad shoulders and an incredibly masculine face. The girl was thin and languid, with a slim figure that bordered on being gaunted, gaunter than Sunny had been in his outskirt days. She had a doll's face with big, glistening eyes and full, slightly parted lips. She was also wearing a very strange and impractical armor, a regal cloak, and a very expensive silver wig. Oh. My. God. No. Is that- is it Neff? Is it- <sighs> What the hell is this? The title at the top of the brochure read, a song of light and darkness. Holy shit. And right below it, in a smaller font. Light shines brighter in the darkest of nights. Passion blooms hotter in the cold heart of despair. What the f Okay, that makes sense about the, the, the title of the chapter. Sunny stared at the piece of paper in his hands with wide eyes. Kai? My friend. What did you just hand me? Oh my god. Effie laughed. Has Kai made this? 
No way. They finished filming it? Holy shit. Can I watch? <laughs> Where can I watch it? Kai coughed. That, um, yeah. The premiere is in a week, actually. My agency arranged for me to attend and give a short speech. So, um, will you two come, please? Oh my god. Sunny shook his head. No, wait. No, actually. What is this thing? Effie looked at him with pity. How did you heard? They made a movie about us. I mean, about what happened on the Forgotten Shore. Sort of. Have you not heard about all the casting news? Oh my god. He slowly shook his head. No! Then Sunny frowned. Alright, alright, I get it. But why would I ever want to go and watch this? I would rather eat another more than Mimic. Sorry, Kai, but I'm not going. He is going. Effie looked at him with mischief and grinned. Oh, hey, Sunny. Do you remember how I said that I only had one condition to join you in the nightmare? Well, scratch that. Actually, I have two. Oh my god. <laughs> yes! <laughs> We're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. I'm so hyped. What is this? Please be the next chapter. Oh my god. When is it? Wait, wait, wait. He said it was in two weeks, right? Hmm. The premiere is in a week. Ah, okay. Maybe we'll read it today. I watch it in reading. Yes. Oh my god, am I hyped? Or what? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Ooh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chapter four hundred and sixty-five. Subjective value. After a while, Sunny and Effie returned to his home, just in time to receive the delivery of the refrigerator. Two tall and broad-shouldered store workers unloaded it from the cargo hold of their delivery vehicle and placed the big box down with a bit of strain. After that, one of them smiled and asked, Good day. Where should we put it? Sunny waved a hand. Ah, no need. I'll do it myself. Wow. You're way too excited about this? Dude. No. Everyone should be. You're, you're too little. <laughs> The loaders looked at him doubtfully, then simply shrugged and left after getting his signature. After the vehicle drove off, Sunny looked around, then easily lifted the heavy box and carried it inside the house without any effort whatsoever. Soon the refrigerator was standing in the place where his old one used to be, the synthwood panels covering its doors blending in with the minimalistic design of the kitchen. Effie and Sunny stared at it for a while, satisfied. Then he said, I like it. A lot. <laughs> Effie smiled. Yeah, really ties the whole room together, doesn't it? Well, in any case, I hope you won't break it again. After that, she yawned and said in a tired voice, Now I'm gonna yawn because of that. <sighs> I'm beat. <laughs> Time to retire to the dream realm. What about you? Sunny thought for a few moments. Suddenly a wide smile appeared in his face. I have an errand to run, but after that, I'm going in too. Oh, wait. Where are you going to sleep? Effie shrugged. Your guest room? Where else? He blinked. Don't you need a sleeping pod? The former hunters giggled. I have one. In your guest room. What? Why are you staring at me like that? Was I supposed to shuffle between the academy and your Kamato's body every day? <laughs> she's, she's fully moved in. There was one time when I was drunk that I imagined after saying to Sunny, you are my sunshine. <laughs> Stop! Stop it! Slice of slice of life of the series is truly peak. I wouldn't mind reading fifth chapter chapters chapters of the cast who's talking. Yes, please. That's gonna be the third nightmare. Yep. <laughs> Sunny lingered for a bit inside. Makes sense. I guess I should have put one there to begin with. What are the chances of me having mundane humans as guests? Then he waved Kathy, oh, Kathy. Then he waved Effie goodbye and headed for their door as she turned her wheelchair around and rolled toward the guest room, bedroom. He was very excited about what he was going to do. Okay. Sometime later, Sunny was in a beautifully lit store, pushing a shopping cart forward and slowly filling it to the brim with all kinds of food, as as well as some other things. He was quietly whistling a cheerful tune, imagining all this stuff going into his new fridge. 
The contents of the cart would have cost him would have cost more than he could ever dream to make, back when he had been living in the outskirts. But now he could not only afford it, but even do so without having to count his money or feel apprehensive about the cost. He could just buy as much as he wanted, of any quality that he wanted, and bring it back home, his own home. Life had changed so much. After a while, he felt as though he, he got enough. Now that he had the covetous coffer, he could not only bring soul shards out of the dream realm, but also bring stuff from the real world to the Shane Isles. That meant so much. An unlimited amount of spices, all kinds of snacks to make the long days of exploring less dreadful, various little things to make himself more comfortable. Hell, if he wanted to, he could even bring a tent and sleep in it like a king. <laughs> incredible. Oh, this is simply incredible. Of course, not all of these things could be bought in a general store, but he could visit other places or simply order stuff on the network. On the network? As he was heading for the registers, a familiar voice suddenly pulled him out of his thoughts. Mom, can we get ice cream? Oh shit, is it rain? Sonny froze for a moment, then slowly turned his head and looked to his left, down a long aisle he was passing. There, a pale girl of around 14 years was standing near a tall, graceful woman in, his, in her 40s. An age-old boy with blonde hair and bright smile was pushing a tub of ice cream into her hands. Sunny watched Rain and her family for a few moments, then turned away and continued on his way, leaving them behind. A quiet sigh escaped from his lips. At least she's doing fine. Well, of course she is. I've only been gone for a month. Why would anything happen simply because I wasn't here? He reached the register, then hesitated for a bit and turned back. When he returned, there were several tubs of delicious ice cream added to his cart. <laughs> yes, ice cream. As the light of dawn shined on the Shane Isles, Sunny appeared on the altar island of the U of the sanctuary of Noctis. He stared at the sky, grimaced at the absence of the moon, and headed toward his room. Some time later, though, he emerged from there with a peculiar wooden box following him with the help of eight small iron legs. With the covetous coffer in tow, Sunny walked into the garden, found a familiar rock, lifted a toothy box, and carefully placed it near himself. Then he took out the single soul shard and put it, put it where everyone could see. Soon, one of the awakened noticed him and approached. Ah, Sonny, you're back. Looking to sell some shards again? Sonny smiled. Oh, yes, sure. But hey, that's not all. Brilliant Emporium has some new merchandise. <laughs> the awakened looked at him with doubt and asked, Really? Like what? Sonny's grin grew wider. How lucky that you happened to ask. Let's see. He put his hand inside the coffer, which then somehow disappeared into the comparatively small box up to his shoulder. Then Sonny began taking out various items, speaking as he did so. What do I have in store? Take a look for yourself. Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Soft, clean underwater. Uh, soft, clean underwear. Salt, pepper, and all kinds of spices. Personal hygiene products. Are you a woman? No? Having a female friend then? What? Really? Well, with the stuff I have here, that can be fixed. Oh, what is this? Would you look at that? <laughs> what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> Are you a woman? No, having a f have a female friend then? What? Really? Well, <laughs> with the stuff I have here, that can be fixed. <laughs> what does he have? <laughs> what the hell? Oh my god. This guy. As more and more people gathered and stared at the absolutely mundane but precious items that almost none of them had access to in the dream realm with something resembling lust in their eyes, Sunny's own gleamed with greed. By the way, Brilliant Emporium is also proud to announce the opening of, of a conve conveyance service. Want our dedicated staff to bring something specific from the real world? No problem. Want to send something to the real world instead? That's not a problem either. For just a small commission. I'm going to get rich. So, so rich. Yes, soul shards were a rare commodity in the real world. But a good pair of underpants in the dream realm was, perhaps, even more valuable. That is crazy. So I'm just gonna make bank. Really roasted some random dude. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh damn okay you get no bitches i can help you get bitches <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> Oh, I need a quick bathroom break again. Be right back. Back. No bitches. <laughs> Entrepreneur and hidden wingman at the same time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he just has girls in his. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. That's so bad. That's so bad. No. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> okay. Chapter 466. A gracious invitation. He collects them like Pokemons. Surrounded by baskets. Yes, he has baskets <laughs> in his... <laughs> in the, the chest. <laughs> oh. Sunny spent a very pleasant morning, selling all the stuff he had brought to the dream realm to the crowd of Awakened. Each of them ravenous for the small comforts the real world could provide. Very few had a close enough relationship with a master or a saint to be able to get these things here, in a place as remote as the Shane Isles. Things were slightly different than large citadels like Bastion or Ravenheart, but on the frontier, frontier, most people simply had to figure out ways to get by with makeshift replacements. Still, nothing could compare to the real deal. All in all, the brilliant Emporium was performing splendidly. Of course, Sunny did not charge too much for the small necessities he, he sold, but it added up. He wouldn't charge a whole soul shard, even if it was from a dormant creature, for a tube of toothpaste. But a few tubes, plus a toothbrush, plus some soap and a box of tea leaves, and a promise to bring more sugar with him the next time? That could work. <laughs> Unlike before, he wanted soul shards instead of memories. He was going to take these shards to the waking world, where their value was much higher. Out there, soul shards came from only two sources. Some were brought back by Ascendant and Transcendent from their journeys into the Dream Realm, and some were scavenged from the corpses of the nightmare creatures that had invaded reality through a gate. They were always in short supply, because anyone in possession of a shard was more likely to use it themselves than to sell it for credits. Saturating their soul core meant much more to an awakened than worldly currency. After all, dead men could not spend their riches. The demand, on the other hand, was extremely high. Not only because all awakened strived to become stronger, but also because young sleepers, especially, were able to use sea shards to increase their chances of returning from their first venture into the dream realm alive. Hello! Welcome! That was the reason why even Castor, a scion of a prestigious legacy clan, had not entered the Forgotten Shore with his core already fully saturated. And that was the reason why Sunny was going to profit a lot from being in possession of his new favorite memory, the magnificent Covetous Coffer. After all, he, for better or worse, had no use for the slow shards whatsoever. He could not consume them, so there was no choice to be made between growing stronger himself or earning credits from another. He was going to sell the shards, buy memories, and feed them to Saint. The simple system was almost unfairly lucrative for Sunny, because memories, unlike shards, had no additional value in the real world. 
Every sleeper and every awakened could bring back memories from the dream realm and freely exchange them here. There. <laughs> How deep today? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> deep. <laughs> I forgot someone like Caster existed. Dude, when he was mentioned before, like, Caster died, I was like, holy shit, Caster was a thing and he died. <laughs> I forgot about Caster. <laughs> Which did not mean that memories were cheap. In fact, they were extremely expensive. But the correlation between the number of soul shards he would have to sell and the number of memories, memories he would be able to buy was very much in his favor. And of course, Sunny also didn't even need good memories. The worse, the better. The usefulness of a memory dictated its price, but did not affect the amount of shadow fragments Saint received from consuming them at all. His smile was growing wider and wider. Two months. Three max. That's how long it's going to take me to bring Saint to 200 out of 200. And what happens next? Oh my, I can hardly wait to find out. His pleasant thoughts, however, were eventually interrupted by a shadow falling over him. Another customer? Sunny looked up and tensed a little, recognizing the person in front of him. It was a young woman wearing a simple white garment. The same one that had escorted him to meet Master Rowan before his journey to the Shipwreck Island. The representative of the White Feather Clan. He suppressed a heavy sigh. Uh, what can I do for you? The young woman bowed slightly, then said in a neutral tone, St. Tyrus invites you to share a meal with her, awakened sunless. Curses. This is what I have been afraid of. Holy shit. Sunny shivered slightly. What were the chances of him keeping all his secrets to himself during a conversation what the fuck? There, with a fearsome demigod in charge of the Shane Isles? <laughs> Saints were creatures of another breed. It wasn't the coincidence that there were only a few dozen of them across all of humanity. They were not only the most powerful, but also the most skilled, strong-willed, brilliant, and deviously cunning members of the human race. Each was a force to be reckoned with. Nothing less would suffice if one wanted to survive the harrowing trial of the Third Nightmare. He wasn't sure of his ability to fool such a person. Sunny forced out a weak smile. It would be my pleasure... The young woman nodded, then turned around, obviously expecting him to follow. Sunny sighed, then dismissed the covetous coffer and stood up from the rock. It was time to face Sky Tide again. They want taxes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all these fucking businesses you do, bitch. <laughs> you better pay up. <laughs> the graceful stone chateau perched on top of the tall manors of the sanctuary, was just as Sunny had remembered it. The open pavilion at the very edge of the ancient monolith had not changed as well. It was bathed in sunlight and exposed to winds, opening to a breathtaking view of the Shane Isles. The ivory tower floated far above, shrouded in white clouds. This time, there was a simple meal served for three people on the round table in the center of the pavilion, and both Master Rowan and St. Tyrus were preparing to eat. The young woman led Sunny to them, gestured to a free chair, and then moved to stand silently by Sky Tide's side. So, hello! Sunny lingered for a bit, then said awkwardly, Uh, greetings, Lady Tyrus, Master Rowan. It's an honor to be invited to join you for dinner. Uh, lunch? Yeah, to join you for lunch. St. Tyrus simply nodded and didn't say anything, but Master Rowan looked at him and grinned. Then he gestured to the food on the table. What are you waiting for, Sunless? Dig in. Food's growing cold. Sunny hesitated for a moment, then smiled. If there was one rule he tried to follow faithfully in his life, it was to never refuse free food. Master Rowan didn't have to ask him twice. <laughs> Devours everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. This will be interesting. Chapter 467. Dinner with a saint. I wonder what they're going to ask. It's probably about his journey, right? Like 100%. Like, because she was like, I was just at the, the thingy. <sighs> 
She obviously, I feel like she knows something that we just learned. So now she wants to figure out if Sunny knows as well or some shit. Let's see. It seemed that the conversation was not going to happen until after the meal, which suited Sunny fine. Not only did he get to enjoy some simple but delicious food provided by the White Feather Clan, but he also received a bit more time to think about what he was going to say and how. Sunny focused his attention on the plate in front of him, and after a few moments, a delighted smile found its way onto his face. That's really good. <laughs> Imagine Tyrus is like, Are you mongrel? <laughs> I know you're mongrel. <laughs> <It's> like, no. <laughs> Imagine, that would have been so funny. Noticing it, Master Owen chuckled. You like it? Well... I'm not going to say that I cooked it myself, because that would be a lie, but I did hunt the beast with my own two hands. I also watched and gave every wise advice when Tyrus was planting the vegetables. <laughs> Sunny choked. Tyrus planted- what? Sky Tide grew these vegetables herself? Oh my god, she does manual labor. Holy shit. <laughs> the image of the stern saint doing gardening did not fit into his mind at all. He threw a furtive glance at the unnaturally beautiful woman and swallowed. Uh, yep, can't imagine it. <laughs> Saint Tyrus was calmly eating, not a single emotion appearing on her face. At the mention of her name, she looked at her husband for a second and then returned to her meal without reacting in any way. I imagine how these guys have sex, like... <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Sunny didn't know if she was simply like that around strangers or always aloof. In any case, it was hard to picture Sky Tide doing mundane things like gardening. <laughs> I told you children are watching, and I told you the children shouldn't be watching. What do you mean? <laughs> Touch me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's read what he wrote. <laughs> oh my god. Like, what the fuck, even? Ugh. No. <clears throat> Not knowing what to think of it, he lingered for a few moments, then said awkwardly. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's very tasty. It was too good, in fact. The food was dis disappearing from his plate at a concerning speed, which meant that he had to sort out his thoughts first. No, had to sort out his thoughts fast. Basically, there were three things about his recent adventure that were better kept secret. I mean, there's a tag called emotionless something for a reason. What the? Are you kidding? No way. <laughs> what if people are actually into that? That's crazy. I learned something today. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know. The, f <laughs> the first one was the miraculous coins and their connection to the sanctuary of Noctis. The second was Mordred. Despite the fact that Effie and Kai had easily believed him, telling total strangers that there were voices in his head was not the best of decisions. Besides that, Sunny got the feeling that the Lost Prince might have been in not-so-friendly relationship with the emissaries of the Valor Clan that resided in the sh on the Shane Isle. Sky Tide did not, did not serve Valor directly, but her clan was still allied to the rulers of Bastion, to the point that one might have gone so far as to call them a vessel clan. Vassal clan, not vessel. And lastly, there was the whole thing about the ebony and ivory towers, the connection between them and the seat of nightmare. If it threatened to create a gate at any moment, he would have felt obligated to inform the white feather clan, so that someone else could destroy it before that happened. But since the seed was far from blooming, he wanted it all for himself. Damn greedy. However, Sunny suspected that he would have to sacrifice one of these secrets to keep the others intact. 
The question was, which one? Finally, the food was gone from their plates, and the young woman in white poured beautiful amber tea into their cups. Sunny blew on his and glanced at Master Rowan. So, uh, not to appear impolite, sir, but to what do I owe the pleasure? Here he comes. He hesitated, then added. Is it about my friends making a ruckus after I was gone on an eventually unusually long expedition? You weren't too inconvenienced by having to look for me, were you? He was expecting a confirmation, but instead a surprised expression appeared on the strapping master's face. Look for you? Uh, why would we look for you? <coughs> Honestly, though, true. Why would they look for him? Like, it's, it's whatever. Noticing that Sunny was confused, he remained silent for a moment and then smiled. Ah, oh, there must have been a misunderstanding. Nightingale and Raised by Wolves did, indeed, bring your disappearance to the attention of our clan. I was going to explore the places where you had been, been seen last to investigate, but luckily Lady Cassia arrived at the sanctuary just in time. She informed us that you would return in a few weeks, so we didn't have to worry. Oh, okay, so they would actually look for him. I thought they were like, whatever, lesser beings. <laughs> Fucking people die all the time, kind of thing. But okay. <laughs> okay, they were better than I thought. A tense smile froze on Sunny's face. She did. Well, I'm glad your, your time wasn't wasted then. Damn it, damn Cassie and her damned visions. How much does she know? He took a sip of tea to hide his expression behind the cup for a second. That changed things. On purpose or not, Cassie had helped him avoid the scrutiny of having to explain his absence to the White Feather clan. That, however, posed another problem. And that problem was Song of the Fallen herself. The timing of her visit to the Sanctuary of Noctis and this strange action of hers were probably not a coincidence. What was she playing at? Unrelated, but are you versed in mythologies, Greek or Arthurian or Norse? Give the three was in the ancient. Was. In the ancient. Philology, ancient Greek and Latin studies in university, so his work shows hints and parallels. Not too much Norse, if anything, because. Swedish. <laughs> but. I wouldn't say so, no. I probably wouldn't notice if he did some type of fucking hint or parallel. I would be like, yeah, okay. Maybe I would notice some, but 100% not all of them. No way. Hey. Or was he being too paranoid? Looking for a meaning where there was none. Cassie was not some Machiavellian... Machi Fuck, how do you say it? Did I say it right? Machiavellian? Mastermind, after all. Unlike Sunny and Nephis both. At least, she had not been. Putting down the cup, Sunny cleared his throat. But then, why did you invite me? Master Rowan smiled and produced a folded piece of paper from his pocket. <laughs> I see you've been in contact with our son, Wardred. <laughs> oh, it was just to hand you this. Lady Cassia left you a message before leaving on an expedition with her cohort. Sunny tried to seem calm and nonchalant as he took the piece of paper and unfolded it. Inside, two words were written in awkward handwriting. Oh, because she can't see or what? Desecrated Grove. Okay. They were, without a doubt, left by Cassie. After becoming blind, writing was hard for her. That's why the penmanship seemed so crude. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Desecrated Grove. Sunny had heard of that place. It lay west of the sanctuary, separated from it by a stretch of long chains. The grove itself was not the most deadly of territories, but there were several corrupted creatures nesting on islands in close vicinity to it. Had Cassie known that he would want to speak to her and left him a direction to where to find her? Why would she lead her cohort to that remote place? which was situated as far from the hollow mountains as one could get on the chained isles. Strange. Or maybe they didn't... Maybe they... No, because he said it was her handwriting. Okay. Sunny folded the note, put it on their van, 
put it under the van brace of the puppeteer shroud and smiled. Thank you. No questions. <laughs> Things like that weren't too strange. Since he had gone on a long expedition and missed Cassie, who was planning to remain in the dream realm for a while herself, it was logical to communicate through messages. She could have just sent one to his com communicator, though. Although, if he was honest with himself, there was a big chance that he would ignore the message if, the message if she had. Sonny finished his tea and then asked cautiously, So, I can go? <laughs> it's not like, like he's held hostage. Master Rowan shrugged. Sure. It was nice to see you again, Sunless. I hear your Emporium is doing well. <laughs> Taxes. Sonny couldn't believe his luck. Expressing his gratitude, he rose to leave. Just as he did, though. Mm. St. Tyrus spoke for the first time, piercing him with a penetrating gaze. She said evenly, Have you been to the Reckoning Island? I knew it. He froze. Under the stare of sky tide, twisting the truth didn't seem that wise anymore. Sunny hesitated, then said simply, Yes. St. Tyrus looked at him for a few moments, then turned away. Oof. Next time someone asks, say no. Taken aback, Sunny stared at the stunningly beautiful woman for a bit, gathered his courage, and then quietly asked, May I know why? Sky Tide kept her gaze at the breathtaking vista of the Shane Isles below them. Then in a calm voice, she answered, You may not. Oof. Okay. Oh no, she's penetrating him. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Say no, bitch. <laughs> oh. Secret, secret. Chapter 468. Desecrated Grove. Sunny descended from the White Feathers' airy in a complicated mood. If he ever had doubts that, Lost Prince, that the Lost Prince was harboring dire secrets now, there were none. Now there were none. Why else would St. Tyrus caution him to not speak about the Mirror Beast, who had seemingly been the only trace left of Mordred's existence? Mordred had conquered the first nightmare when he was only twelve. Such an individual, surely, would have been as famous as Nevis back in the real world. And yet, Sunny had never heard of him, or of anyone who had accomplished the same feat. It was almost as if someone very powerful had purposefully erased any mention of the mysterious prince from history. Tyrus? Tyrus? How had he lost his physical body to begin with? And where was his spirit body in the dream realm? Did, did he even have one? Yes. He must have had it once, at least. The pack Sunny had found on the Reckoning contained a detailed map of the Shane Isles, with the word HOPE written on it next to a question mark. Back then, he thought that the, the owner of the pack had been killed by the Mirror Beast. Now, however, he suspected that it had belonged to Mordred himself. So the Lost Prince had at least visited the Shane Isles before disappearing. Was the Great Clan Valor compl complicit in his disappearance? Sunny had no real reason to come to that conclusion other than the fact that the Shane Owls were in their sphere of, sphere of influence, and that St. Tyrus hinted at her knowledge of the nature of the Mirror Beast. But why hadn't she killed it herself? I am going to have to ask Mordred a lot of questions when he appears, which wasn't going to happen for many days, sadly. Until then, Sunny had other matters to attend to. He glanced at the sun and judged that it was barely reaching its zenith. The moon wasn't going to appear for a while. So, even though the desire to place his precious coins on the altar gnawed on him, he decided to address the most pressing problem first. Cassie. No matter how reluctant Sonny was to face his former friend, he had to speak to her. He couldn't make plans for the future without knowing who would be by his side as he challenged the second nightmare. And he absolutely needed to challenge it. Collecting essence was fine but becoming a master would change the power dynamic between him and Nephis much more, and even though creating future cores would be harder after he achieved a higher rank, being an ascendant also meant that there would be much fewer things out there that could squash him like a bug. Some names of the characters come from the mythos. That's the closest, I guess. Cassia, Cassandra, Mia, 
Mordith's name also comes from mythology. Ephes being Athena, and Ephes might be coming from Nephil Nephilim, though I'm not sure. Probably. Sidon being the obvious parallel to Eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> Kai is the only outliner, I think. Kai is his K-pop man. <laughs> Not only among the nightmare creatures, but also among the humans. The more crumbs of information about the sovereign Sonny learned, the more disturbed he, he became. He was distrustful by nature, so he didn't believe that these hidden overlords would not try to exert their influence on him or try to destroy him one day, simply by virtue of being able to do so. And even without this threat, there were hundreds of masters in the world which meant that there were hundreds of people who could kill him without breaking a sweat. But if he became a master himself, well, then there would only be a few dozen individuals he would have to be really wary of. Like Saint Tyrus. Not to mention that, as an ascended, he would be free to come and go from the dream realm as he wished. He would even be able to abandon it forever and never come back. Wouldn't that be nice choice to have? Wouldn't that be a nice choice to have? So, the desecrated grove it is. Sunny frowned, then returned to his room, took out his map from the covetous coffer, and spent some time adding all the details he remembered from Mordred's map onto it. Soon, he was in possession of an intricately, intricately de detailed depiction of most of the Shane Isles on his hands complete with description of what dangers he was likely to meet and where. With its help, traveling to his destinations were going to be much safer. Sunny started the route to the desecrated grove inside. Shouldn't be too hard. I can probably reach it by morning and return to the sanctuary the next day at night, when the moon is high in sky. And finally get to use the coins he had bled so much to earn. He dismissed the covetous coffer, stretched his limbs, and headed toward the exit from the sanctuary. <gasps> Let's go. The journey to the remote island that Cassie named in her note indeed turned out to be uneventful. Sunny rode the heavenly chains in form, in form of the shadow and traversed the islands on foot, avoiding any nightmare creature that crossed his path. The southern part of the Shane Isles was relatively safe or at least safer than the northern part. Well, no surprise, it was bordering regions of the Dream Realm that had been tamed by humans more than a decade ago, while to the north there was nothing except for the dreadful Hollow Mountains. The desecrated grove, grove itself was somewhat near the main route from one of the Great Chains, which connected all of the Shained Isles to the rest of the Dream Realm, to the Sanctuary of Noctis. People who were either coming to or leaving the region used that route to travel between the Great Shane and the Citadel, so it was often patrolled by the White Feather Forces. Sunny traveled along the established route, then left it to go deeper into the dangerous wilderness of the Flying Islands. He carefully avoided all the places where corrupted nightmare creatures were known to dwell, and kept his eyes open for any sign of danger. However, nothing that couldn't be avoided happened. None of the islands Sunny wanted to cross were rising, so he even managed to escape having to endure the crushing. The sun rolled down over the horizon and disappeared, and the moon followed its example. As the first light of dawn ignited in the east, Sunny flew through the shadows and then soared high into the air, cresting the edge of a large island and softly landing on its soil. If Sunny decides to abandon the dream realm, I'm afraid faded might throw a meteor at Sunny's neighborhood. <laughs> Probably, or a portal just opens. <laughs> and a titan steps out. Yep. <laughs> some shit will probably happen <laughs> if, if he decides to do that for some reason. Totally. I can see it. <laughs> oh. The desecrated grove. He had arrived. Oh my god, Cassie moment. Oh. Sunny let out a heavy sigh. He had almost hoped that some terrible monstrosity would attack him on the, on the way, making it so he wouldn't have to meet Cassie. <laughs> the searing mess of emotions he felt toward her was much scarier than any nightmare creature could ever hope to be. At the end of the day, humans were much harder to deal with than monsters. Word. 
<laughs> Last chapter, Cassie, please. I want to meet Cassie. Oh, I'm so scared of this interaction. <sighs> Mood. <laughs> Killer. No! No! Chapter 469. Fire Keepers. The desecrated grove was a large island, its surface overtaken almost entirely by a forest of twisted, shard dead trees. The ground was covered by a thick layer of ash, which was often thrown into the air by the strong winds. Gray flakes rained down from the sky. There were many nightmare creatures nesting in the dark forest, and although most of them were only of the awakened rank, one had to be careful not to get ambushed, surrounded or stumble upon an especially ferocious abomination. Sunny couldn't even begin to guess why Cassie would choose such a place to establish a camp. However, he could already see the signs of human presence. Yay! There were four chains connecting this... There were four chains connecting the desecrated grove to other islands, but the one he himself had used was the most convenient. Any sane leader would have chosen the same route, and even though the crushing was capable of making anyone's path unpredictable, the other three were just too much of a risk. That's why Sunny wasn't surprised to see human footprints leading toward the menacing wall of blackened dead trees, already mostly covered by a new layer of ash. There were also signs of a battle, with several misshapen car carcasses laying on the ground and showing clear signs of their soul shards being removed. <sighs> Imagine an unholy titan walking out, you can already consider the world dead by then. <laughs> Seriously? Cassie's such a sad character, I've been watching your first volume videos, so the convo between Cass and Sunny about flaws and powers is fresh in my mind. Sunny says since your flaw is so bad, your power must be just as amazing since the spell is balanced, if nothing else. It's just sad knowing what happens later. Right? Oh, it's so sad, but I love her. <laughs> Cassie's amazing, I love Cassie. <laughs> But also, she did something that's fucked up, but still the character... <laughs> Judging by the fact that they were only partially devoured by the scavenging nightmare creatures, Cassie's cohort must have passed through no more than a week ago. Sighing, Sunny tied a piece of cloth around his mouth and nose, summoned the cruel sight and started following the footprints. Soon he entered the ashen veil of the twisted forest. His ability to see through any shadow pro proved to be invaluable once again. If not for that gift, he would have been scared witless, expecting a sudden attack to come from the surrounding darkness at any moment. With his sight, the shadow sense, and the ability to see all around himself with the help of one of the shadows, Sunny felt confident that nothing would be able to get close to him unnoticed, at least not on this comparatively tame island. But that was the thing about the dream realm. Even creatures that were supposed to be easy to deal with could kill you in a second if you weren't careful enough. Tame or not, everywhere in this godforsaken world was a po potential death trap. As Sunny went deeper into the forest, he discovered more signs of Cassie's cohort passing through. There were marks left behind by violent skirmishes, as well as several abandoned campsites. It seemed as though the firekeepers had been taking their time, slowly exploring the path ahead and moving their camp further and further into the depths of the desecrated grove after clearing a long stretch of it. Why travel here all the way from the Night Temple? She had to cross the entire region, getting away from the Hollow Mountains, only to get stuck on an unexpected island. I just don't get it. Sunny was clearly missing something. Mm. With a slight frown, he turned into a shadow and glided through the darkness, covering much more distance with every minute than he had been on foot. He still preferred to be cautious though, sending one of the shadows ahead and moving slow enough to be, to be able to react in time if something unexpected happened. After an hour or so, he finally found them. Cassie and her cohort were camped at a secluded clearing that was around halfway to the heart of the island, dangerously far removed from the edge. If the desecrated grove entered the ascent phase, the time window for them to get back to the chain before the crushing became deadly would be extremely narrow. Okay. 
Since it was early morning, most of the members were asleep, with only two lookouts standing watch with torches in their hands. Sunny observed them for a few seconds from the shadows, and then sent his own forward. <sighs> he recognized both of the watchmen, since they had spent a lot of time together during the struggle for the throne of the Bright Castle, as fellow members of Neff's faction. The fire keepers were comprised of about 40... Sir, 40? What? I thought there would be like, what, five people? 10, maybe. 40? <sighs> what? The fire keepers were comprised of about 40 survivors of the Forgotten Shore. Those who had decided against pledging their allegiance to the legacy clans that wanted to... Do they wanted to, I guess, recruit them, as well as the government, and had not become fully independent like Effie and Sunny had. Mm -hmm. Many people escaped and forgot. Yeah, sure, but like 40 people that just tags along wherever she goes? Maybe not. Maybe I was... Okay, probably not, right? But yeah, 40 fire keepers. Sure, I can accept that. But there's not 40 people here, uh, is it? <laughs> no way. Although Cassie was their nominal leader, she didn't command the whole host herself. Okay, there we go. Instead, Neff's followers were divided into several cohorts. They now, now this is more... <laughs> I was like, this is no way. Each operating in different regions of the Dream Realm. Firekeepers were not a formal organization, but more of a loose alliance of people who shared similar beliefs and principles. The main being the hope that Changing Star was going to return alive one day. Cassie's a gang boss. Seriously, what the fuck happened? Sunny's shadow entered the circle of light, created by one of the torches, glared at the lookouts, and then waved at him. The young man stared at it with wide eyes. What the hell? The other swiftly turned, summoning a weapon. What is it? The first one remained silent for a moment, then sighed. Oh, crap. He massaged his temple as if experiencing a headache. I think it's Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> As always, you ask a question and it answered in just the next line. Yes, <laughs> but I have to ask the question. <laughs> There were eight people in Cassie's court, every one of them a familiar face. See, also get the answer here. There were eight people, not 40. <laughs> well, Sunny more or less knew all of the survivors of the Garden Shore, had fought with them back to back, so that wasn't surprising. What did surprise him, though, was how warm they welcomed him. Yeah, fuck, it's Sunny, oh my god, no. Hey, warm welcome. Nah, <laughs> I don't know. Even if some were clearly displeased with having to wake up a bit early and wary of his entrepreneurial ambitions, which they had been amply, amply subjected to during the war for the Bright Castle, they were still clearly happy to see Sonny. Okay. Soon, his shoulders began to hurt a little, a little from all the friendly slaps it received. <laughs> oh my god. Would you look at that? Four months on these damned islands, and this is the first time we actually cross paths. How have you been, Sunny? Oh, I was so sad that we missed you in the sanctuary. Glad you decided to visit. Sunny smiled weakly and responded to their greetings, feeling both strangely warm inside and extremely uncomfortable with all the attention. Truth be told, he was glad to meet them again too. He still couldn't quite believe that anyone had escaped the Forgotten Shore, let alone a whole hundred of young men and women some of whom were in front of him right now. After the greetings were done, he looked around and raised an eyebrow. Uh, sure guys, likewise, but where's Cassie? The firekeepers glanced at each other, then one of them smiled. <laughs> we ate her! <laughs> oh right, you must be dying to see her. Not exactly. The girl who spoke shook her head and turned toward a path leading somewhere, somewhere away from the camp. Let's go. I'll take you. The fuck? Not too far from the camp, a deep hole... <laughs> She's in a hole? A deep hole was dug near the roots of one of the dead trees. Beside it, with her back to him, stood a delicate girl with pale blonde hair and an elegant rapier hanging on a scabbard in her belt. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry. Not too far from the camp, a deep hole was dug near the roots of one of the dead trees. The bathroom? 
<laughs> Leave Cassie alone. She's taking a shit in the woods. I don't understand why there's a hole. Am I stupid? Like, <laughs> why? Why is? Why does it mention that it's a hole? Okay. Hearing their footsteps, Cassie turned around. A small smile appeared in her face. Sunny, you've made it. Oh my god. And we won't be able to see. I won't know until next time. <laughs> because it's the end of the stream. We read the chapters. Let's go. Of all things you thought of taking a shit. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of, uh, like, at work. We have this, like, uh, wilderness... Um, guy program or whatever and it's like like he's all out by himself in woods and shit so it's like yeah that's the first thing i thought of <laughs> when is next time i don't know maybe tomorrow maybe probably tomorrow there's a lot of shit going on right now. <laughs> but i will let you know in the discord um when it's time also, do you live like Effie? What the fuck do you mean? Next time be movie time? Oh my god, I forgot about the movie! Holy shit, okay. Oh my god! <laughs> do you live like Effie? I live in someone else's house. Not very clean. <laughs> <laughs> I vacuum like maybe once a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clean enough. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> right now it looks like ass, but yeah. There's a reason. Just read. I want to, but it's like meh. Good. <laughs> Lies. No, shut up. <laughs> Okay, ending stream before I get too much hate to the night of the seven. Okay. <laughs> ah, it feels so good to read again. Oh, to stream again. Thank you all for showing up. It makes me extremely happy to know that if I leave, you will stay. <laughs> that makes me happy. Thank you. <laughs> and I will be back and I will stream even more. Hopefully. In the near future. So, yay! Running to avoid questions, 100%. <laughs> oh. I guess if you want anything, Discord is always there. I'm always on it. That's where I will be. 100%. But yes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support. Monster Hunter Mondays, high possibility. Mm, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Have a good whatever it is where you live. Yes. Day, I would say. Have a nice rest of your day, everyone. And I'll see you next time. And I will notify you when that is what I know. Bye, hi, Supreme, and hello. Bye. Hey, do Follow me on Discord. Join the Discord. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitch. Thank you so much for doing so. Hey, do Bye-bye.